Hey everyone, Heartless here bringing you guys another StarCraft II Legacy of the Void daily match. Today it is going to be a Terran vs Protoss on Dusk Towers. Spawning in the bottom left hand position, playing as our blue Protoss playing for Flipside Tactics, it is M Canning. And spawning in the top right hand corner, playing as our red Terran, it is Techbot. Protoss vs. Terran on Dust Towers. More likely than not, I would like to see some type of bio drop play because there's so much... I know I say this a lot, but this map is so easy to abuse the airspace in between the third base and the natural expansion on both sides. We'd, I'd like to see not just some bio, uh, some bio drops, but also some Warp Prism Harass as well because it's so strong on this map being able to rasp one side and the other base side the natural and then the third base as well so i wouldn't be surprised to see something like that on this map it's just so easy to abuse that and it's very hard to def it's very hard to defend against that especially if you are if, especially if you don't put up many stat if you don't put much static defense up that's what i'm trying to say however techbot in a strange location for his barracks and putting down his second gas already, is this going to be an extremely fast into very, very fast starport? No, it's going to be a ghost academy. A ghost academy from TechBot, and he's not even trying to hide it. The, the ghost academy is right on the front door, and this probe from M. Canning is going to see that. M. Canning himself electing to have gone for a gateway expand... We'll see how he decides to react to this. Possibly Templar? So he's going to come in here. He's going to see that and go, that's a Ghost Academy, my friends. And so let's see how he decides to respond. He's going to be getting his Mothership Core out here. Along with Warp Gate should be dropping down here in just a minute. And then we should see the tech of choice. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Twilight Council with... A Templar archive, Archives, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see a Robotics Facility to get an Observer out as well. More likely than not, we're probably going to see the Robotics Facility first. So we'll see what he decides to do as along with that. Now, he uh, Techbot is getting his expansion now, so that's going to keep him somewhat in the race of economy, but I think his expansion is a little bit late comparatively and I think that just might be because of the opener he decided to, to do and so the factory's coming down hmm maybe factory into starport maybe a factory into starport with a ghost drop we'll find out in just a moment the barracks is going to take off away from the tech lab and so the factory's probably going to land on the tech lab and we're probably going to see a cyclone for defense, that is something we actually see very often in Terran vs. Protoss as a Terran. That Cyclone, yes, it's a little bit costly, but it does give so much added benefit for defense because it's got a huge range when it comes to being able to shut away possibly Oracle Harass or even a Warp Prism or things of that sort. Yeah, so it is a Cyclone, and I'm not surprised there at all. Now, with the Starport coming in, yeah, I think he's just kind of played a little bit more defensively while he techs up. This is very fast teching up from TechBot. Well, maybe not fast, but different teching up than I would expect. Especially with that Ghost. With that Ghost Academy. That's very strange. And the Starport going to land down here. Probably going to see... Hmm. Banshees? A Fusion Core. A fusion core is being built by TechBot. Possibly the advanced ballistics upgrade? He is building Liberator, so it's probably going to be the advanced ballistics upgrade as soon as that finishes, which adds a plus four range to the Liberator's <clears throat> excuse me, defender mode. So when they target the area, it's going to be a lot further away, and so that actually could do some serious damage here. Now, M. Canning on his side of things, he did end up getting a robotics facility, with a with an observer here, just to make sure he didn't lose to any of that ghost shenanigans, I guess he'd call it. Yeah, and so there it is. There's the advanced ballistics. Getting a couple more gateways. 
Getting his forge, I don't think he's overreacting in any sense. I do like how he's decided to get the Twilight Council with Blink. I think Blink and Stalkers is a really good situ is a really good thing to have in Terran versus Protoss because Terrans typically will try and do some type form of dropping or liberator harass on the mineral line or whatever it might be. And Stalkers are pretty good at shutting that down. However, with advanced ballistics, these Stalkers are not going to be able to shoo this liberator away so he might end up having he might end up losing a good amount of units here depending on what happens all right moving on he is getting his sec his third command center down and a couple more a couple widow mines hmm i'm curious to see what his full composition is going to be because it doesn't look like it's going to be bio not at this point at least all right advanced ballistics is about to finish the Observer should have seen this. Yeah, the Observer sees the Liberator here. So he knows that this is coming, but he doesn't know about the range. So these Stalkers are going to be in for a treat. As well as the third base going down for M. Canning as well. Getting a couple mortals, getting plus one armor. Not ar armor. Attack. And so here we go. The Liberator starts its targeting, is able to shoo away a bunch of these probes. Gets a couple kills for his troubles. He's up to three. The other Liberator are going to come in as well. He ooh, he might have actually had a really good amount of kills there. And the second Liberator are going to go ahead and come over here to the natural base. Siege up right in the very corner of the map. And it's going to start getting some kills here. Let's see how many he's able to get. Three, four, four kills. And denying a lot of time mining for M. Canning. Because right now, M. Canning had to distance mine from his third base into his nat into his main nexus until his third nexus finished up and so this is very annoying for m canning to have to deal with at this very interesting composition i have to say in the very least for tech bot so getting a couple getting join claws getting some more widow mines he is definitely going mech he's gonna mech it happen getting some tanks widow mines very interesting choice i think this could work as long as he gets good liberator defense okay m canning having finished up his stargate is going to be able to shoo away these these liberators with his one phoenix one phoenix should be able to do the job alone but still denying so much time i think that natural base has been denied mining for almost a full minute and a half possibly just a full minute but that is so annoying to deal with and that is a lot of lost minerals that does hurt the economy and production of m canning so good for TechBot on that i'm just kind of curious as to his composition choice definitely with the mech i think this could work you don't see this kind of composition very often in PVT. I'm curious. I, I want to see how this ha I want to see how this works out, and I think it could, as long as he doesn't overextend, because one of the things that M. Kenning is going to be able to do now is this army is going to be very mobile compared to the army of Techbot, because he's going to have Blink, he's going to have some disruption Novas. It's going to hit quite hard, especially with that plus one. And the one, plus one upgrades as well. And I don't think any upgrades... Yeah, just plus one armor is now being researched for TechBox, te, TechBot's mech. Say that ten times really quick. So this army is going to hit hard, and it's going to hit fast, and it's going to be very mobile. M Canning, as long as he... If he can abuse that mobility... He might end up shutting this down because Mech is very slow, to say the least. And can't <laughs> Techbot with the uh, with the gold expansion over here. This adept was going to try and find out when Techbot decided to take his fourth over here at the more natural position, but instead, in traditional Terran form, flying it over to the I guess I'll call that the fifth or sixth base expan position on the gold. Which will be good, because it's going to give him a lot of minerals. So, yeah. 
Techbot getting a lot of mech. He is... I like this. I'm curious to see how it's going to play, but he has to make sure he doesn't overextend. Now, the army comes through, and a couple of disruption novas go down, and they get a lot of Widow Mines. A lot of uh, Defender Zones going down, and he's going to be able to shoot this army of M Canning away. But these Disruptors getting some really nice shots on those Widow Mines. He's now lost nine Widow Mines in just a couple shots here. So that's that's a good amount of time if production-wise from just a couple Disruption Novas. Techbot has to be careful not to lose it to any type of... Uh, I guess I would call it... I'm not going to call it lucky disruptions, but he's got to be careful not to get... Not to let uh, M. Cannon get those money disruptions. So he's going to go ahead and move on over here. And the Liberator is going to move right into the Stalkers. He's going to be able to pick one off and severely weaken the second. One disruption Nova does whiff. A second one moves over but doesn't get far enough. We also see a Fleet Beacon and another Stargate on the way out. Along with the Dark, Te along with the dark Strain has finished as well. We're probably going to see Tempest here to help outrange these Liberators with their Advanced Ballistics upgrade. And yes, with the Dark Shrine, it is going to be for Archons. This is an interesting choice of positioning for Techbot. I hope he he's moving into a Choki, so he's got to be really careful. M. Cannon could just move around right around the back of this and kill everything. He's got to be very careful. He's moving very, very close to the base of M. Cannon. One disruption go Nova goes down and severely weakens that tank. Down to one hit point left. The Stalker's going to get one shot off and take it out. Noble Stalker has sacrificed himself to take out that tank. Now, Techbot is definitely... He's ad, he's advancing very far forward. And Canning, he's going to go ahead and move around, and I think he's going to flank him. This is going to be really disastrous for Techbot, especially with the with the Observer here, being able to take out all the Widow Mines, and now Techbot finds himself in a very precarious situation. His... <clears throat> Excuse me, his reinforcements are going to get taken out as they come out. All the Widow Mines die, and this tank might also as well. Yes, it does. Now, Techbot is sieged in one position and really can't move. He's got to be so careful, especially with the Tempest now out, which is going to be able to do a lot of damage. The Thor is going to be able to get to work on it, though, but this these Tempests are focusing down, and I think he's going to get the Thor. He, he does. Getting that Thor is a big pickoff. And now the Siege Tanks are stuck. And the army for M. Kenny comes back from around the back and just starts to jump the aggressive blink right on top of the uh, right on top of the tanks. And there it is. GG. Well played by M. Kenny. Wow. There was a lot that happened in the last 10 seconds in that one. <laughs> that was fun. Interesting composition choice from Tekba. I think it could have worked out had he not overextended. Unfortunately. Mech is a very hard thing to play, especially on Dust Towers, because it's so slow, it's so immobile. I think one of the things I would have liked to have seen is possibly a second Starport and maybe some uh, double Medivac production to help pick up those tanks and use Tankavacs. Tankavacs are so critical in the, in the play style now in Legacy of the Void because it offers added mobility that, do, that wouldn't exist otherwise for your mech army. Maybe that might have helped... Maybe not. I don't know. Regardless, it was a fun one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit that subscribe button down below. If you have hit that subscribe button down below, please remember to tell your friends about me. Please remember to check me out on Facebook, Twitch, and on Twitter as well. Please remember to check out enochproductions.com. Also, lastly, as just a small advertisement, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, I would like to ask if you guys have the ability to go check out my Patreon page. One of the things that I'm having a difficult time with my casting is with any type of lag. Uh, I'm using Fraps right now to record this, and sometimes it ends up lagging. So sometimes it ends up taking maybe one or two takes. It'll lag sometimes within like the first minute or two. And so it makes it difficult. Anyway, I would, I'm hoping to petition if you guys have the ability to to possibly go to my Patreon page and make a couple pledges or donations to being able to get a new graphics card because I'd like to run the I'd like to run Shadow Play as my recording software instead of Fraps, but unfortunately my graphics card is a 590 Ti and Shadow Play can only record so I can only be used 
on 600 model series or later. So I can't use that right now. Not to mention, I would also really like to be able to run this, <clears throat> excuse me, in ultra high mode for you guys so you guys can have better detail inside with, you know, the mineral patches and what have you. So anyway, if you guys have the ability, I would really greatly appreciate it if you could go to my Patreon page, make a, cup, make a couple of dollars pledge or donation, just a few every now and then really do help. Anyway, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.